through. Salo for love, everyone, and welcome to Teach Me NZ. My NZ. My name is Sonia Van Schaik, and I am coming to you from Auckland, New Zealand. I'm an across school leader for the ACOS Community of Schools. I'll now pass you across to Elena. Elena. Kia ora. E te atua, manakitia, mato, i tene wa, amene. 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 Kia ora. Catherine. Um, kia ora koutou, ko Catherine Palmer tenei. Um, I'm an intermediate teacher at Kohia Terrace School and I'm also an across school leader with ACOS. Um, what I've been doing this morning, I've been to my first boot camp at Cornwall Park, so I'm not going to be able to move tomorrow. Um, so my job is to give you a little bit of an introduction to the um, Auckland Central Community of Schools. Um, and bear with me and I will just get my screen up and running. That's it, Catherine. Keep going. Okay, so um, that, here we go. So this is the Auckland Central Community of Schools. We are a group of 11 schools uh, scattered across the central Auckland Isthmus. Uh, we have one secondary school and we have one early childhood centre, a uh, couple of intermediate schools, a couple of four primaries, and the rest are um, normal primary schools. So we have one lead principal and two sub-leads, uh, nine across school leaders, Plenty of in-school leaders, and that's all of them there um, on a meeting at the beginning of the year in our summer close. Uh, 567 teachers and a grand total of 8,110 students. So that is us. Today's presenters. So we are welcoming Alison, who's speaking on leadership across schools. She's the principal of Koya Terrace School. Amy, Elena, Erin, Hannah, Patricia, Sarah, and Viv. And we're all looking forward to presenting our uh, slides with you today. Thank and you. that's me. Here you go, Sonia. Thank you, Catherine. Well done. Um, pass you across now to Alison, who will introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I'm Alison Spence. I'm the principal of Kohia Terrace School. It's a real pleasure to be part of this today. First time for me, so quite exciting and also a little bit scary. Thank you, Alison. And our next one is um, Amy. Kia ora everyone, my name's Amy Batrick and I'm a year one teacher at Kohia Terrace School. I'm also an in-school leader for ACOS and um, again, same as Alison, this is my first um, one of these. So I'm really looking forward to um, sharing some ideas with you about um, ESOL strategies that we have at Kohia Terrace School. Thank you, Amy. And now we've got um, Elena, should just talk about who she is. Hello, Kia ora everyone, my name is Elena Rehana. I am a year three and four teacher at Newmarket Primary School. And today I'm going to share an app that has changed the way I do communication in my classroom. Thank you, Eleanor. And we've got Erin, who's next. Oh, that's Catherine. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. I'm Erin Hooper. I am an across school leader for ACOS. I'm also a year five, six teacher in an innovative learning space and uh, the team leader for our area. Um, I'm quite looking forward to this entire process, hopefully. Thanks. Thanks, Erin. Um, we've got um, Hannah, you're next. Kia ora, I'm Hannah Cameron. I teach at Newmarket Primary School in Auckland. I'm a third year teacher, and I teach in a class um, mixed with year three and fours. And today I'm gonna to be talking about engaging with our community. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Trisha, you're next. No, she's just dropped away. She's just having a few um, sound issues, but we'll carry on. Uh, we've got Sarah, you're next. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Morrison. I teach at Newmarket Primary School too with a year one class. And today I'm going to be talking about using Seesaw with my junior. Thank you, Sarah. And last but not least, we've got Viv. Kia ora koutou katoa. Um, I'm actually working for Core Education as a facilitator um, with Kahoe Ako and Century Funded PLD. And I've been um, blessed with the capability of working with the South, South Auckland Catholic um, Kahoe Ako, which is not as big as the one that you um, guys are working in, and I've really loved listening to your stories as well. I'm also really happy to be here because I have uh, <clears throat> left somebody else at home staining a huge deck. So let's <laughs> try and keep this going for at least three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Um, Patricia, how's your sound going? 
Uh, let me try. Can you hear me? Yes, we're in. We're in. Okay, Trisha, just introduce yourself, please. Fabulous. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, kia ora everyone. Uh, my name is Patricia Whitmore and I am a year two at Ramira Primary School in Auckland and I am an ACOS uh, in a school leader and something people may not know about me was that when I was younger I was a basketball rep in my city. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Patricia. All right and we get we, we now move straight into it. Um, Alison, you will you'll now um, share your screen and tell us a little about bit about um, your amazing adventures. Alison, the screen's on you. So I'm just about to share my screen. If I can get that working. Here we go. So I, as Sonia has said, I am the principal of Collier Terrace School. And it's a real pleasure to be part of the ACOS learning community. I had the opportunity this year and have been taking some international case study work, looking at leadership across schools as part of a ASB APPA Travelling Fellowship, which I was awarded. So an amazing privilege for sure. The work I'm looking at was around key elements of leadership across schools as opposed to within the school and how a key leader develops the leadership capacity of not just the across school and in school leaders, but the other principals within that community as well. As Derek Wenmuth states, network leadership is democratic and distributed. It's about collective strength. It's about coherent, multi-layered collective decision making. The way I've synthesized the work that I've undertaken this year is through Simon Sinek's Golden Circle. And this is a really a powerful tool to develop collective understanding of purpose, of what goals are, and it also can be a framework for guiding decisions going forward. So for me, I started at the why. At the core, leadership across schools is about empowerment and it's about challenge. It's about ensuring actions and initiatives that will grow leadership and teacher capability. And of course, the essential thing that student outcomes will improve. But how will this happen? As a result of my work, I've identified eight main areas that enhance capability, investing in and developing relationships that are not just about a sea of nice. It's about transparency. It's about strategic and purposeful professional learning and development. It's an investing in middle leadership and their growth. It's about critique and about honest review. The what, so what are the key outcomes? For me, there were seven. It's about coherence and shared understandings of key concepts and strategies. For example, what is our shared understanding of collaborative inquiry? Do we all come from the same angle? It is about agency for teachers and students. And it's about adaptive expertise. And by this, I mean deep inquiry, really knowing your unconscious bias and having the confidence and ability to challenge, to change, and to adapt. But how do you know these enablers and outcomes have made a difference for students? By identifying the what, there is that pathway back. But if, so if we take enhanced leadership capacity for, as an example, what does this look like in a systems process? Are we, as leaders, communicating effectively? And how do we know? How well are we, as leaders, using a coaching way of being? Then we come back to the why. How has enhanced leadership capacity, improved teacher capability and developed in a course how critically how a student and um, sorry critical is how has student income uh, student outcomes improved. You might like to try developing your own and using these questions as a guide the dialogue justification and challenge can really ensure clarity for all. This journey has been one of the most power powerful influences on my own leadership journey. I've met some inspirational people doing some amazing work, and I really would like to acknowledge them. There are some links and references here that you might find of use if you're interested. But finally, Ihara Takutoha, Itakitahi, Itoa Takitahi. It is about community. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Alison. Paki Paki, well done. You did it. And everyone come on back <laughs> and um, any questions for Alison? 
Unshare screen, Alison. Yes, I'm just trying to unshare it. Okay. Uh, there we go. Oh, wonderful. That's right now. Cool. Well done, Alison. You're no problem at all. <laughs> um, you, you're still sharing your screen. Can you? Are you able to unshare it? Um, I'm trying. I'll just the green. There's a line along the bottom usually. There we go. Got it. There we go. Sorry. Okay. About that. Well <laughs> okay. Some questions for Alison or some comments? My comment is I just really enjoyed the um, questions you've provided us to kind of reflect for ourselves. I think that's a really useful kind of jumping off point. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I so also it's just something to think about So and some something for us to take forward with us. So yeah, I, I thought that was excellent too. And I think the model that you use, Cynic's model, is really easy to use as a tool to share with other people to discuss this idea. Yeah, and that's what I hope people could take out of it. It's not, it's, for me, it's about a way of synthesising my learning, but also something that other people can take and maybe use to try and get that clarity and that deep understanding. Sure. What I, something that I like was the point that you made about being a leader, not just in your school, but also spread yourself um, horizontally with the other schools in ACOS. I like that. I hope, Alison, you are sharing um, wider than the, um, your local community as well, because I, the, 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 the way you've used the Synex Y is really, really profound, and I think there are some um, Kahuiako out there that are still trying to get through, so I think that's really worthwhile, really worthwhile spreading and really learning. Yeah, certainly yeah, trying. Are we getting a bit of feedback? Um, can we get everyone? Thank you, everyone. Um, can I get you to turn off your cameras and your mic, please? Amy, you're up next. You're up next. Okay, kia ora everybody. I'm just going to go on to share my screen. There we go. Hopefully that's all working okay. So um, although I'm not an ESOL teacher myself, um, I'd like to share some ideas about what we're doing with ESOL students at Kohia Terrace School. Um, it, it's part of my cross-sector group as part of our ACOS community and I'd just like to share some ideas with you today. So um, often our ESOL teachers come to work alongside students in their classroom rather than the students being withdrawn. They assist students with their learning across the curriculum so our ESOL students are learning the same content and topic language as their peers. Our ESOL program also focuses on pre-loading students with topics they are just about to begin. For example, here, students are learning academic words before their next term's inquiry begins in a few weeks. So this is helping to develop their CALPs or their cognitive academic language proficiency. This way, students become experts and are able to contribute conf confidently to their class discussions. We also focus on different themes that the students are likely to encounter in their daily lives. This is developing their BICs or their basic interpersonal communicative skills. The aim is to get them confident talking and using lots of different vocabulary. The program is structured cumulatively so that each lesson builds upon the next. Our ESOL program is individualized and needs-based. So after establishing what students' gaps are, our ESOL teachers design activities and games that will help them with a particular skill that they're missing. The ESOL program is designed to give students opportunity to talk as much as possible. So listening and speaking comes before reading and writing. We try to integrate ICT that encourages talking, for example, apps where students can record and hear their own voices. We give opportunities for students to write in their home language if they're able to do so. This can build their confidence and give us an indication into their literacy abilities. We use the ELLP data to inform our teaching. If there are clear patterns of gaps on their ELPs, we can use that information to plan needs-based interventions. We consider the balance of withdrawal programs and within-class support and use a hybrid of both. So students not only have opportunities to develop their BICs, but importantly, their CALPs. Um, just a little bit on engaging the parent community, we currently have a WeChat group which we can use to communicate with our Chinese community. One of our kind parents volunteers to translate our school newsletter into Mandarin. We also have TAs who translate important school notices and leaflets into Mandarin and Korean. 
We have ESOL information on our website and links to documents in a variety of languages. We also offer evening sessions on how to help your child at home for all our new entrant families. One of our goals at KTS is to increase parent engagement in multicultural events, to share and promote cultural celebrations with staff and students and make the way we celebrate cultures more visible in the school. So an example of something we've done this year was the Korean Day initiative, where a student approached his teacher wanting to celebrate the Korean culture with the rest of the school. And he then went on to organize a shared lunch where Korean children and their parents were invited to celebrate together and each bring a non-Korean friend to share in the Korean culture. We also run language clubs and cultural dance groups, which are led by volunteer parents. So just a final word on where to next. So we would like to include more detailed reporting to parents of ESOL students based on their ELPS. We also aim to increase activities within our ESOL programs that encourage homeschool partnership. We've got some amazing ideas from other schools in our call and we look forward to collaborating more as we work together to create the best possible outcomes for our ESOL students and their families. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Well done. Um, everyone, if you can come back, please. Um, I love you. I love seeing some of those images, Amy. Really mm. cool to um, get an insight and a window into your school. Excellent. Thank mm. you. Uh, Amy, I really love how um, you have uh, in-class support and that you do a lot of preloading, especially working with um, year one students. That's really important and just building their confidence, which is really fantastic. <coughs> Thank you. Amy, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, yes. Do the do the ESOL teachers collaborate with the classroom teacher, or how does it work? Yes, definitely. There's lots of communication and collaboration between the ESOL teacher and the classroom teacher, which really helps to um, to have everybody on the same page, and so Excellent. the students know what they're doing, and everybody is in collaboration together. Great. Thanks. Okay. Um, anyone else? Amy, I just want to say yeah, it's nice to show what you were doing at our school, but also how we're linking into other schools and how we're doing that learning because that's what being part of a community is all about, really. It's around sharing and gathering everyone's perspectives to add value to our own. So nice work for you. Thank I think you. especially when you consider, Amy, um, how our community is changing. Like this is a really significant issue for our community. So the more work we do and the more we share that across the community, I think it's going to be helpful to huge numbers of teachers. So good job. Definitely. Thank yes. you. Because the community, the demographic is changing, going to be changing hugely over the years. And you can see how the groups of students are moving through the schools right up through to Epsom Girls shortly. So it's yeah. going to make a real difference. Absolutely. Indeed. OK. Um, Eleanor, you're next. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, again, everyone, camera's off, and um, we're getting quite a few visitors visiting us. Camera's off and mic's off. Cool. Uh, kia ora, my name is Eleanor. I'm just going to head into screen share so you can see what is happening. I hope. <laughs> Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Eleanor, keep going. Can you? Perfect. Okay. Go. okay. Um, so my whakatauki about today is ma whero, ma pango, kaoti ai te mahi, and it's all about collaboration. I've titled this presentation Homeschool Partnership Breaking Down the Walls for Life, or as life feels busier for all involved. This year um, I have trailed something new. I have heard about it from colleagues and I jumped on an initiative and I have not looked back. Just to set the scene, my context, I work in a Central Auckland Primary School um, I have been there for five years. We have 75% plus English second language learners and 70% are least Asian. We have a high number of our parents working and or studying, so they lead very, very busy lives. This year I got introduced to WeChat. It is a messaging service I believe established in China. The positives for WeChat for me, it is a free download. It allows individual and group chat, so I can have a class set up, as well as individual with just parents um, of particular students. It's an app, so it's not connected to my phone number, so I maintain my, my privacy and my time at home as well. Um, it's easy. As you all probably know, if something's not easy, it doesn't really last very long in a classroom. Um, you can also turn off notifications as you need. How did I implement the project? Sorry. Um, it was 
so, so easy. I send a note home with all students and I discuss this with parents at interviews. We have lots of parents who come and join us midway through the year, and kids obviously, and so I can just add them into the group chat. It's superb, really. Um, what I do on this, I use WeChat for so many things and I kind of find new things to use it for every other week. So I send notices, I send praise points, I follow up on behavior, um, I talk to parent helpers, I share students' works. Often my students will come and say, oh, Mrs. Rehan, I'm really proud of this. Can you, can you show mum or can you show dad? Um, I answer questions and I always, um, if I need parent helpers, I'm always likely to find some available on WeChat. Um, biggest challenges for me were getting the parents on board. First of all, um, I had 26 out of 28 within the first week of setting it up. They were really, really keen and just loving it, sending heaps of messages and loving the photos we were sending home. Um, I did have two, one that didn't have a phone. And so for me, I just negated that by sending um, printing photos and sending those home so they were still included. And one of the parents just decided that she didn't really have time for the communication or the extra photos. So that was fine. I've got a separate chat with her so she doesn't see everything just involving her child. Um, biggest impact on my teaching, my kids love doing work at home. They share it with me all the time. Um, the parents are more involved. The students are proud and keen to share their work. It's easier for me in terms of admin, organizing parent meetings, um, for reporting and everything. Um, reviewing goals, I do a review to the goals and that's been much easier. And I do believe we've seen accelerated student achievement from using WeChat and that homeschool connection. I've just attached a couple of slides for everyone. If you'd like to set up WeChat in your school or in your class, it is fairly easy. Just follow those steps. Um, and obviously, as a learner, I still have my next step. So that's where I'm heading to next. Tweet me on Twitter and see how I'm going with those in a few months' time. Ka kite or no? Thank you, Eleanor. That's awesome. Great to um, hear you sharing our story at New Market School with WeChat because we know that Facebook is a bit of, it's been hard work getting Facebook <laughs> going. But WeChat <laughs> is definitely um, making a difference. That's uh, right. Anyone else? Comments? I just love the way that you, um, you're not including your phone number, so you're getting the communication going, but you've got your privacy and turning those notifications off, so you end up having a quiet <laughs> evening and not constantly checking your phone. Good on you. <laughs> I like the um, possibility for um, translation, especially as so people good. has mentioned before, the changing in the community at the moment in different schools. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's a big change. Yeah, WeChat does provide that ability to translate. So it just means even though it's not literal, it's people get the essence of what your messages are. So yeah, I love how you're using it. And I know it's awesome. Thank you. It's definitely something that I'd like to try. And I think it can be really engaging and really useful as you can just send photos right there and then in the moment. And um, I can see that it's quite easy to use. And that's something that us teachers love is when things are easy to implement. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I think it would be working with students who are disengaged would be really powerful um, and I'd like to see that happening because it's um, one of the, the issues around, for example, you know, our issues around literacy, um, being able to and just use those kind of tools to really push the engagement, I think it's great, it's exciting. It is. And I think, I think it adds a parent agency there, that's a great mm -hmm. opportunity for parent agency. Yeah, totally. Okay, um, thank you, um, Eleanor. We've now got Erin, you're up next. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Present mode. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Okay, and you're away. Okay, well, everyone, I, um, as I said before, I'm an across school leader and the work that I'm going to talk about is um, an investigation we did into Pat. Uh, Kim, Catherine and I are three across school leaders and we really wanted to understand more about Pat. We knew that it was designed to help teachers make more dependable judgments, which we needed for consistency across the coal, but we wanted to know how else it was being used and whether or not we should be promoting it for our community. Now. PACT has been really quite controversial and what we wanted to do was separate the PACT from the fiction. 
by talking to people who were using it and asking them about what, um, what effects they found for both teachers and for students. Now, we met with a lot of different people and we asked them all, the question we asked them all was, why should we be using PACT? And as you might imagine, we got a lot of different answers, but everyone agreed. It's amazing professional development for teachers and it increases student agency. So, why should we be using PACT? It's because it's a developmental framework for learning. It's a framework that gives a broad picture of a student's ability. It clearly shows which aspects of a curriculum area a child doesn't know, and that's what needs to be taught. Lots of teachers reported how using the framework was helpful in designing an all-round program, especially when they realized there were areas that they were missing out. Um, what matters most, we thought, is that teachers need to have a broad range of evidence. They've got to look at what came before, what comes after, and they need to use this to find out whether they've got the best fit. The challenge is entirely in getting to know the illustrations really well. And because PACT is a developmental framework for learning, it also allows teachers to create a personalised pathway for, for any child. Familiarity with the illustrations allows students to have greater agency. They're part of the process. What we discovered is that teachers who collaborated together to plan rich integrated units, they had the most robust data when they entered it into PACT. But the teachers didn't do this individually. They worked in teams and they used the framework and the data to inform the deliberate acts of teaching that they needed to plan for. Now, how do we use it? Well, this sets it out, but essentially, it's in exactly the same way that good teachers have always used formative information. It just gives a more detailed picture of what your gaps might be. And it also produces more consistent results, okay, within a school, but also across a school. Cohorts and individuals can easily be tracked over time. The problems with it are that it's, it's it shows the complexity of the core subject areas and challenges teachers to, to ensure they're offering a broad curriculum. This can obviously be confronting. For success, there needs to be investment in time and PD for teachers until they can use it efficiently and effectively. We started the process with a lot of questions and we do accept that there are definitely challenges. We're looking at the positives and we're confident it can deepen pedagogical understanding for teachers and bring about improved outcomes for our students. On the end of the, I've added a few links to something I, to some things I think might be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Erin, for sharing your journey with the PACT. Um, questions or comments? Catherine, you're a part of this. You might have something to add. Um, I think we just found um, everybody we talked to just said how much it had supported their own teachers, teachers in their school to to learn about the curriculum and to support them in finding gaps and the measuring of the progress of the students uh, was just really clear. So we talked to different people, but everybody had their own really positive spin on it. I appreciate that you said you do need to have some professional development around it and sort of take the time to actually get to know how it works. So you don't just judge it straight away. You do need to put in some time. I think that was, for me, Hannah, that was one of the most important messages that, that the leader the leadership teams at all these different places said is that mm. if you don't do that you are going to get failure that you, yeah, you absolutely it, it's such a powerfully useful tool we need to we need to factor that in when we're starting to look at, at rolling out introduction of it mm. yes and i just really like to celebrate the richness of the inquiry that you undertook it was really you know that's the whole thing about this is about inquiry really looking at how it's going to suit individual people and individual schools and then of course us as a community of schools so I just really loved hearing about the inquiry and the process that you talk about you took you know you, you went about as well thanks Alison mm. very cool um, thank you everyone um, Hannah you're up next are you ready yes I am <clears throat> okay. Amazon, yeah. thank you let me just share my screen so hopefully you can see what I'm seeing I'll just share that and start up my presentation. Um, so, thank you. 
Um, so as I said, I teach in a year three, four class at Newmarket Primary School. And today my topic is around engaging the community, specifically around reporting to parents. So community is very important and something that we try hard to uh, foster at Newmarket Primary School. Um, some of the ways we do this is around engaging with them at the school gate and encouraging them to come to class and school events such as you know, assemblies, market days, and book week events. And we try hard to foster these partnerships with our parents. The partnerships that we have with our whanau are ongoing, reciprocal, two-way communication between the teachers and the parents. Not only are these partnerships a goal of mine, but you'll find they're also a part of our teachers' code and the values that underpin them. Tracking parent communication is also an Auckland Community of Schools goal. So parent engagement is very important in education. So this year, um, we tried to strengthen our communication with our parents. We took a look at our reporting system. Last year, we did this in two ways. We had the traditional 15-minute parent-teacher interview, and then we also had the Mutukaroa program, which is a home-school partnership project aimed at engaging with, their, with our parents um, with their students' learning. And this started in the junior school and gradually moved up with the students each year. But we had a dedicated Mutukaroa coordinator who handled all of the meetings and organised all of the resources to go alongside those learning goals. So we needed to come up with a way to report to parents that combine these two things. We knew that parents loved the Mutukaroa program, but we needed to make it manageable for all the teachers. So we started with that template and we have at least two learning conversations a year. And these meetings can take place at any time throughout the year. There's no set day and there's no set time limit. So it's based on the child's learning needs. The format is more like a three-way conversation and the students really do get involved. To begin with, we talk through the testing that's done in reading, writing and maths in very simple language. We know that 86% of our students at Newmarket come from homes where another language is spoken and close to 40% of our role is ESOL funded. So we try to make sure that we explain the different tests that we're using very clearly and we talk about how we make our OTJs. Then together in collaboration with the parents we set goals for the students and because the testing that we're showing is very recent like within two weeks the students are very aware of their next steps and they can contribute to this goal setting process. And then those are the goals that we use to include on the formal report. So the biggest challenges for me are just keeping up to date with the testing because the test, uh, well, the meetings rather, are scattered throughout the year. Um, you can't bulk test all of your students at one point in the term. Um, there's also never a week without any meetings and it can be hard to organise times with the parents. But the impact this has had on my teaching is I have much better communication with my parents um, I'm much happier this year and I just have a sense of working together with my parents. And they love that the reports are co-constructed. Um, the impact this has had with my students is that the students are part of the meeting. They're very, um, they can articulate their goals and, you know, they take part in that goal setting process. And also the parents have a sense of community because they can take ownership of their child's learning. So I guess my message is engage in your community. Changing the reporting process is the best thing I've done this year. Instead of choosing a goal for my students, working in collaboration with my whānau has impacted my teaching practice greatly. And I really encourage you to try it. And there are just some links in case you want to check it out further. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Love hearing our story um, coming through like that. Uh, I, Thank you. When I see the... The parents and the students sharing their learning on the three-year conversation. It's it's really a sight to behold. Thank you. Yeah. Hannah, I think um, I think um, sorry. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for Okay, okay. As part of our investigation, part of our investigation we also talked to the school, to school who did who um did, um that idea were of idea were of parents here in part of the reporting the process deciding what we're seeing what we're seeing. I think it sounds like it's the way that's 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 the
Okay. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Erin. I just really like the way that the way people came from um, learning parent um, learning meetings, meetings to actually those whole learning conversations. All right, thank you, Alison and um, Hannah. Um, thank you. Hannah. Can I pass you now pass to Patricia? Now to Patricia. Yeah. Just getting a bit of feedback, so feedback. this might go away, might away, go with, the away with the next, next presenter. presenter. Okay, sure. Now, <clears throat> let me share my screen and I'll get my presentation. You can see it? Yes, can you see and it now? Full, and it's full screen. Thank you, Patricia, over to you. Great, thank you. Now, kia ora everyone, I'm Patricia and I am very excited to be here. My presentation is about learning learning maps in reading and how they affected a group of children's progress in this area. A learning map is a tool that makes children aware of resources available to them to enhance their learning. It also allows them to become more agentic and it enables teachers to see how autonomous a child is. The child draws himself, people, places and things. They also draw arrows to indicate the kind of interaction exists that exists between the child and the resources. All these to explain their learning and in a could be in a specific area or learning in general. This is followed by conversations in peers and then in groups of four. As a result, the child comes up with a goal or a change they want to introduce to their learning. In this case, you can see that goal in the post-it note. My idea was for a small group of children to share their learning resources and ideas during the conversation stage of the creation of their learning maps. I wanted the less successful readers to access the resources and ideas, the more successful ones were. All this with the purpose of improving their reading skills of all involved, but especially of the child tracking as below. So I chose one child at its, each stage of the following levels, below, just at, at, above. Now the challenges that I found were, one, children and I were new to learning maps. Two, learning maps follow only or allow only certain and minimal prompts. So I wasn't able to draw the children's attention to certain resources mentioned by peers. But the big surprise I have was that the child tracking us below was showing more awareness of resources available to her and she had more access to resources than her peers. She herself was more resourceful. In fact, she mentioned mistakes as um, things that improve her learning. Now, the um, impact that I, um, sorry, in my class, I kept the learning maps concept by alive, by making teachable moments more explicit. For example, in a conversation about wild animals with a child at about, mentioned that he had read about coyotes in, a, in Reading Express. After finishing the conversation on animals, I said to him, so Reading Express in Reading X is a site that you can enhance your learning by use about reading. And he replied thoughtfully, oh yeah, you're right. The learning has been enhanced by the fact that children have more choice and more voice and what, on what they need and they want for their own learning. Children have started suggesting alternative activities for their reading contracts. The child tracking as below follow through with her goal and she has continued her upward progress and she has just recently entered the band um, of at. So can I say this is, um, can I say that this is due to learning maps? Um, it's hard to say, um, but it's definitely one building block. Now, what I would say to other teachers, learning maps are versatile tools and because it's created by your student, their voices magnify. It certainly makes them aware of the opportunity for autonomy and gives him or her a platform to take the steps towards that autonomy. It sends the message that it's okay to take control for their own learning. Kiora. Thank you, Patricia. And again, um, 
I love I children's love drawings. Children drawings. Excellent. <clears throat> I love that idea love that. of it's okay for kids okay. to kids take control take of their learning. Their like learning. How, valuable how valuable is that? Is that? <laughs> thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank, oh you. thank you. Let me, uh, Let me uh, stop the sharing of the sharing screen. Of the screen. I would just like would to just say like that I can that really I can see the benefit of the learning maps. Learning maps. Um, I can see I, how visible the learning is, and that's really great. Great. I could tell that even though your students are quite young, they had a really deep understanding of places they could go, or people that they could co con communicate with that would help them with their learning. So that was really fantastic to see, and I'd love to give that learning maps a go in my class. Yeah, that's why I think it's very useful because it's very simple, but very, it's very effective. I also think it's a good tool for helping to explain what student agency means about how the, because there's some people who don't understand the concept, so a tool like that where the is so involved and so articulate would be really useful as one of the ways to explain, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean? Yes. Okay, um, Sarah. Sarah, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I am. I'll just start sharing my screen. Uh, hi everyone, as I said before, I'm Sarah and I am a year one teacher at Newmarket Primary School. So today I'm here to share with you my journey of using Seesaw as a digital portfolio for junior school learners to share their work with their, fa their families. So using Seesaw in my class came about as we used to send home yearbooks at the end of the year full of great work um, that students had done throughout the year. But I found with year one students that this was a lot of uh, teacher time. It was more me putting things into the yearbooks than the students. And they weren't really engaged in it. And the parents didn't get to see any of the work until the end of the year. Um, I had seen some apps around, especially um, at different ECE centres. And um, I thought that would work really well in my class. So I did a bit of research and I found um, Seesaw, which um, has a free version of the app, which um, was really great to use in my classroom. So I started with a small group of kids at the end of last year, just practicing how we use it. And then this year I started right at the beginning of the year um, with my whole class on board. Um, so at the beginning of the year, I set up uh, a class journal and all of the students have their own journal pages. So this is my class for the year. Um, we have the app on all of our classroom iPads, and so the, we started with getting the kids uh, used to learning how to use Seesaw and the different ways that you can put posts into their journals. Um, and it was really easy for them to add lots of different things. They really enjoy doing it, um, and they picked it up really quickly. They love taking photos of work that they have done. Uh, we take lots of photos of different events that happen in the school photos of different skills that they're learning inside and outside the classroom, videos of them talking about their learning. They love uh, creating pictures on the iPads and posting them on Seesaw and writing about them and, of course, taking pictures of their art and sharing that too. Um, I really wanted to get the parents on board really quickly, so uh, I sent home a QR code for all of the parents that they had the link to their child's journal. And when we have our parent meetings, I always talk to the parents about Seesaw and help them set it up if they haven't already. The parents really love it and they ask lots of questions about what they can be doing at home as well. And recently the latest um, version of Seesaw has a function where you can message all the parents. So that's a fantastic way to uh, send messages and reminders of upcoming events and things like that and be able to con connect with all the parents at once. Uh, it has been a challenge getting all my parents on board, especially those that um, don't speak English as their first language, but we're almost there now. Um, I've had great feedback from parents and grandparents. I've still got families that have now moved overseas connected to Seesaw. Um, the kids are really good at uh, posting lots of things on it and the parents and the children all like posts and write lots of comments. Uh, the parents can only see 
their child's journal and everything that the children or the parents comment on and post up has to be approved by me. So it's really easy to manage what is put on Seesaw. Um, the kids are much more engaged in sharing their learning at home. They're always asking if they can post on Seesaw so that they can show mum. Um, we're really focusing on giving feedback to each other about our learning. We're still in the early stages and definitely have my family a lot more, families a lot more connected um, and it's a lot easier to share what's going on in our class. I highly recommend it and here are some links uh, if you would like to learn more. Thank you. Thank you, um, Sarah. Fabulous to see our story for a new market school. Also, um, I know we've spoken before about as a school and move to that next level, we'll have the purchase version, and that's where we're at to next. Anyone else? Anyone else? We use, we use um, in my time, in my in year five, six months, we've been using Cecil all year as well. And we absolutely love it, and so do the parents. We've had a huge amount of positive feedback from the parents about um, in real time knowing what their kids are doing. And, and what they really like is really when like they say, oh, I, at school I see you've been doing such and such. They actually get responses. They, they're having conversations at home about the work that's happening in the classroom rather than answers that says, how was school today? Oh, yeah, good. You know what I mean? The parents actually know what's going on, and that's been hugely powerful. So I, I'm with you, Sarah. I, I, I never want to give it up. I love it. I really love it as a tool. Definitely feel like I have a, a much better connection with my parents through yeah. Yeah, and the parents know what their kids are doing all the time, which is really nice. Yeah, yes, I, I just think, think about um, policy and about National Centres Plus and thinking we actually don't need National Centres Plus. All we need is schools using tools that are available to connect with community because it, that's what it's all about and it's all it's happening already. So it's, it's just really cool. Exactly. Yes, I think it's an excellent um come back to um, the usual reply of children. What have you done to school at school today? And it's, oh, nothing, nothing. But I think with this, it's much more visible. What I like about this program is that the students really take ownership of it. So mm. it seems like compared to some other programs, this is um, not so much work just for the teacher, but it really includes them as well. And yeah, I think that's awesome. I think it's a really good program. I think, yeah, I think that's a really important point is about students taking that ownership for themselves out of the agents of their learning. Yeah, good point. And I think you're right about the idea of the um, learning to give each other feedback because that's something we've spent quite a bit of time is talking with kids about what um, what's relevant feedback that you're giving to someone else's work. And that's been really, really helpful, um, ongoing, of course, because it's not something they do brilliantly to begin with. Absolutely. Okay, um, I'll pass you now to Viv, our lucky last presenter. Are you ready, Viv? You're the okay, Tony. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. I'll just share my screen. <clears throat> yes, and we can see it. You're live now, Viv. Fantastic. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I just need to get a new voice. Kia ora koutou. Um, basically, this uh, is a, a, a view of a journey that I've taken with a kahui ako in terms of professional development. Now, professional development is um, often return, referred to in education as a wicked problem. In this, basically, means there were so many contradictory facets that it's often hard to solve. Now, I believe the development of kahui ako and the a way in which we can decide uh, on our professional learning is a really vital way for, for education to move forward. So this introduction is really looking at the first phase of our um, professional development approach, which was a coaching and mentoring for the lead teachers and the cross-cold teachers. Often um, they have come from just being in the classroom and need to feel comfortable and confident when they're working across the kahui ako. And part of our uh, research with core education was looking at networks and organic 
um, networks or the development of communities of learning and there were some common issues that came through. One of the major ones was the elephant in the room, what we're not talking about and often that comes in when you're looking at early childhood, primary and secondary and melding those two groups together. There were also some um, issues around achievement and goals and making them smart goals and, and the confusion that existed. There was also a wee bit of resentment between colleagues and um, we needed to sort of try and work out a way in which we could make all those issues um, not roadblocks. And so that was one of the things that we, we did a fair, about, a fair bit of work around um, making sure that that didn't happen. Um, and as Alison talks about, Previously, the, the why and the focusing on, on the actual core of the what we are actually here um, and the need to make some change because what we've all been doing in the past, with, particularly with our priority students, hasn't been working. So change was the word. So we just developed a, a set of learning intentions and co-constructed these as a group. Um, running a series of workshops that started in term two. Um, and at, at the start of it all, we w didn't want, really didn't want things to happen with people falling off cliffs and feeling like they just had to, had to keep up. So one of the major tools that we actually worked on was a co-construction of protocols and um, the Joan Dalton, Dalton's Learning Talk um, booklets were a great help. So the the next couple of slides are basically some examples of, of the tools that we used to use with the teachers and the cross coals and then they would go and work within um, the, the schools with the teachers as well. And, and this was um, a hopes and fears padlet that we kept on going back to and it would surface all the issues that people had when they were first embarking on their development. We then also looked very carefully at a Padlet um, an activity and a Papatangata activity to ensure that everybody had connections across the cold because that was another, another major um, issue for people to get to know each other. We also looked at um, what we needed to do to collaborate and this was really interesting. A lot of people decided they really needed to see face to face. Um, their colleagues, but in terms of a big call like you are all um, a member of, it's impossible. So we now have worked towards um, hangouts, collaboration, social media, etc., and 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 leveraging off the digital tools. So the impact on um, the the students is basically has been largely around their professional inquiries, and that's been quite phenomenal. Um, We've now got some confident and competent coaches and we're looking at a collaborative assessment across the coal for next term. So that's going to be a major, um, um, a major issue. I guess one of the ma main things that you need to focus on is being a change agent. We need to tr disrupt um, in order to get, to get transformation. And I guess the main thing that we look at is kamahmua, Kamuri looking back in order to move forward and I think that's the, 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 the whakatauki that we all hold to because that's really important. Um, here's some links that we've used and um, go well people, it's a, an exciting time out there. It is indeed Viv. Um, Catherine, time please. How did she do? Um, 4, 4.50. Oh, Jill, you didn't break the record. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I have to put a shout out that, that um, Rob Clark still holds that. Hey, Rob, are you listening? <laughs> uh, well done, well done. Um, well, we had plenty of time, so I let you talk. We've got our <laughs> <figure this week. laughs> it was just some really good reminders about why we're doing what we're doing. And, you know, that thing about challenge again and about we have to be it's not about a see you nice, as I said. It's about critical analysis, and it's really challenging practice. And yeah. I think your presentation really highlighted that, that if we want to make a difference for kids, we've got to look at doing some things differently, yeah. or in it, because otherwise nothing's going to change. And that, and I think that, <laughs> nice work. Yeah, that's really the, the thing about, and the, the role of, a, of the coal leads and the, and, and the cross coals are so pivotal and so important. So if you are a cross coal lead, celebrate what you're doing because from the, what I see around um, the country, it's just vital. And if we don't get that, we don't grow sustainability either. And um, yeah, you're so right, Alison.
Um, any, anyone else before we move to the next part of our afternoon? Exciting part too. I just want to say Wendy Coford at Newmarket School is doing some amazing tweeting for you. So I'm not a great tweeter, but she's yeah, doing all well. Thank you, Wendy. At Newmarket School, please follow her if you're not already doing so. And I call out too, I see Ginny there and Manal as well and a few others. Thank you for supporting us, people. Really cool. Anyone else? All right. I want to really celebrate the fact that we can share learning in such an amazing way as this. And, you know, we've talked about opening up our schools to actually celebrating practice amongst schools, but this is also celebrating learning amongst communities as well. And it's just a great way of actually really celebrating and acknowledging people and what they're doing, the inquiries that they're undertaking and the learning that they get that actually makes a difference for everybody. So I think, Sonia, a shout out to you as well for actually setting this up because it's a really innovative yeah. and exciting yeah. to be part of. So, yeah. um, thank absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely support that. It's been a lot of work getting going and getting us all in order, but um, you've done a fantastic job. <laughs> and I think we're, we're all really inspired now. Oh, I hope so. So we're not travelling in the car to meet each other. We can just hop on, eh, Catherine and Erin? Yeah, but you can't have a cup of coffee together you. online. <laughs> well, Hi, coffee I'm, here. I'm putting my hand up to say, hey, guys, what I'm thinking about, Sonia, is we can get some cross-coal sharing going on. And yeah. I, this is so powerful that I, I, I just kept on going in through my head of all the things that we've, you know, that I've been witnessing when we had our sharing inquiry last week. And that was a phenomenal and buzzy, and I was just sitting listening to all the wonderful stories everybody was sharing here, thinking, yes, we could, we, you know, and we don't, you don't have to travel down to South Auckland. You can, we can all do this together. So I would like to say, hey, why don't we try and do something like that next year? I think that's a really good next step for, next step for us is that cross coal because we, um, we, we need to look beyond our own little our own little cosy group now and just see what other people are up to yeah. and I'm looking forward to finding more more about that at ULEARN too. Absolutely because yeah. we're actually embarking on looking at, at the first part of collaborative assessment which is the elephant in the room um, but just listening to the pact for example and, and, and the discussions and then also the apps um, and the, what you're actually talking about, Alison, at the start about about the why, I think it just brings it together to a beautiful package. So I'm excited by all this. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, it's great to have more education involved as well, actually, because, I mean, you're such a valuable, you know, you sort of cement so much across the country and you've got some awesome people. Yeah. So happy to well, have, meet you, Viv. Yes, it's been great. Look at, look at everybody. I now have your emails. I, have your emails. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> There'll be people knocking on your, on your doors. <laughs> and just before we finish, um, we've, I put out a, a leader for solo taxonomy and English language learners, particularly for our call, because we have a, a high number of second language learners. A book I wrote um, and was published early last year was Pam Hook. This is now up for grabs, and when I put out a call, we've got 20 educators. I'm just going to put you through Fruit Loop, so keep, bear with me while I just share my screen, and let's choose who the lucky educator is. All right, sharing my screen. Now, remember, Catherine, I can't see things, so you can just keep me posted all, with what you can see. It's all looking good at the moment. We've just got... Um, oh, yeah, there we've got Fruit Loop, or... Yes, Fruit Loop's up there. Okay, and I'm going to press the fruit machine. Okay, let's see it go. Judith Somerville is the lucky winner. And Judith, I'll be in contact with you soon, um, sharing how to get the book out to you. I've got your email, so I will be letting you know by email as soon as this is finished um, how I can get the book to you. I'm sharing my screen and I'm coming back to you. Well, congratulations, Judith. Well done. Mm. Uh, and everyone, and we've done really well. It is exactly 2.59. And again, the conversation can continue because uh, what this forum does is it allows you to go back and rewind the learning. So um, on Twitter, I've shared the link with your emails. I've shared you the link. And over the next few days, um, I'll be cutting your video and adding it to your 
Teach Me Than Z page, and then from there we'll share it out to the public where they can come back and rewind your video, hear you talk, and rewind your slides to get more information. So, um, without further ado, if there's anybody else before, yeah, um, I really want to acknowledge actually as the principal within the coal, the work and every effort everyone's put into this, you know, from our in school to just teachers to across school leaders. It's not about formal leadership, it's about everyone being a leader. And it's been really evident today that that's exactly what we have. So um, amazing effort to all of you who participated. Um, amazing and so nice to see you giving up a bit of your holidays. And actually, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> thank you for giving up a little bit of your holidays to actually um, share learning like this. So thank you on behalf of the ACOS principals. So can I say as a timekeeper, can I say thank you everybody for keeping to time? <laughs> really easy. I didn't need to keep dinging my wine glass too often. It was all perfect. So, um, and a huge, huge progress from the time we practiced to now. So, really well done. Awesome effort. Thanks, people. Thank you, Catherine, because without you, I couldn't do this. So, as you are ready, um, I'm going to stop recording now. And so that we can, we can then breathe a sigh of relief. I'm stopping the, I'm stopping the broadcast now.